What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes, and in this video I'm going to cover everything you need to get started with OpenAI embeddings. This includes what embeddings are, what vector databases are, some embeddings use cases, and then finally an example of a system that uses embeddings. Let's get into it. At a basic level, you can understand embeddings as the knowledge that exists in the brain of AI systems such as ChatGPT. Within the brain, we can give ChatGPT access to a bunch of different knowledge, similar to how if you were to store information in your head as a human. When we take a certain string we want to turn into an embedding, such as Cooper Codes is a YouTuber, we can then get the embedding by calling the OpenAI API, which I will cover more later in the video, which is then going to return a vector that represents the embedding of that string. So embeddings are arrays that look something like this and they represent the specific way an AI system interprets a certain string. OpenAI has this great example we can take a look at to further understand this concept. So every single dot in this graph represents an embedding of a certain string. For example, all the green dots here are athletes. So we can see one here which is talking about a Japanese racing driver, or another one over here talking about an English former professional footballer. Embeddings help AI systems understand how different information is grouped together. This graph is interesting because if we go back to what we were talking about before, this information here is how the dots actually get placed in the graph, so how the AI systems understand how different information is relevant to each other. So now let's talk about how to actually create these embeddings. So we can take a look at embedding a certain string. For example, Cooper Codes is a YouTuber. All it takes is one simple API call to turn that string into an embedding. So as you can see in this code example, we can just call the embeddings route in whatever programming language you're using, and now we have the embedding representation of that string. So you can see here that the actual embedding vector is returned by OpenAI. Also, whenever I say vector, just think array. Arrays and vectors are pretty much the same thing in this context. So now that we've actually fully embedded the string Cooper code as a YouTuber, where do we store it? In order to compare a large amount of embeddings, we generally need to use something called a vector database. Vector databases are databases designed to store vectors. Big surprise. So this diagram here helps us show the process of how we work with a vector database in a pseudocode-like sense. We have strings on the left that we want to turn into vectors. So Cooper Code is a programmer, becomes an embedding, and then we can store that information in the vector database here. It's also important to recognize that when you store embeddings, information that is similar to each other, for example, a bunch of information about Cooper codes, is going to be stored next to each other. Vector databases are useful because you can query the database here with a bunch of different embeddings, and then get embeddings relevant to a certain query. At the end of the video, I'm going to show off an example of querying vector databases. But for now, let's talk about some of the top embedding use cases to understand why these type of systems are useful. I'm going to cover text search, code search, and text similarity. So text search is pretty much what search engines do. Enter a query, let's say Cooper Codes, and then that query gets embedded and compared to the other embeddings in the Google Vector database. This will then show all the relevant information to Cooper Codes, such as my YouTube channel, website, and GitHub. Now let's talk about code search. So code search is a specialized form of text search where developers look for relevant code snippets. Imagine a developer asking, where is the code that adds up two numbers? Code search would use embeddings to find the relevancy between the query and then the most similar embedded code snippet. For example, an embedded snippet with a sum function. Finally, we can discuss text similarity. Text similarity helps us determine how similar two pieces of text are. Texts that are similar will be stored closer together, while texts that are completely different will be stored further apart. Now I'm going to show off a practical example of building a Q&A system, so a question and answer system using embeddings. So let's say we have the string, is Cooper Codes a programmer? We're then going to turn that string into an embedding just like before. We can then take that embedding, is Cooper Codes a programmer, and see if it's similar to any of the documents inside of our vector database. So after querying the vector database, we can get back that the information relevant to that question is that Cooper Codes is a programmer. So we can grab this document from the query because it is relevant to our question. From there, we can then ask a system like ChatGPT a question, such as, is Cooper Codes a programmer? And then pass in the context that Cooper Codes is a programmer. This context here is incredibly powerful because you can take any custom data from your vector database and then pass it into any of your ChatGPT queries. 
And then ChatGPT will finally return something such as saying Cooper Codes is a programmer. And so this is a really powerful example as to how you can use vector databases for custom information. All right, so that was Embeddings in five minutes. Thanks for watching.